I'm Willis Spicer, and I think there's at least half of you here I know. Yeah. <laughs> um, the people at the, um, I used to give out the awards for the Governor's Awards. How many of you have been to the Governor's Awards? I know you all. <laughs> I, um, I said this morning that I was introduced recently, and uh, the person said, this is Willa Spicer. She spent 50 years in education in the state of New Jersey. And I stood up and I said, not a chance. I did not. And then I sat down and I figured it out. And I have spent 53 years <laughs> on education in the state of New Jersey. So if I don't know you, you're probably young, <laughs> which is kind of neat. Um, I, uh, now that I've left the state, I have um, a little more freedom to say what I want to say. <laughs> Not that I didn't do it when I was with the state, <laughs> but it's a little easier now. So I, uh, I will take every opportunity to try to tell you the difference between what is and what some people think should be. And you, unfortunately, ladies and gentlemen, in this DGO prob SGO problem, is that you have a lot of people telling you what should be. Some of it required by the state, and some of it not required by the state. And some of it required by your district that makes no differentiation between what's required by the state and what's not. Now, I don't know if any of you have uh, done any look at the SGOs. Let me ask you first this question. How, let me see who's here. How many of you are um, elementary school teachers? Ooh, secondary? <laughs> Looks like all of you are both. <laughs> uh, when I use secondary, I mean middle school and, and high school. Middle school, uh, maybe middle school separate. It's always harder. Um, did, it, did I, is there anybody else here besides that that, I, that doesn't fit into some sort of category? Students. students. How many students? Oh, I'm glad to see you. You are a hope for the future. <laughs> Listen carefully. <laughs> we, we really have a lot of hope for you guys. How many of you are first year teachers? How many of you are non-tenured teachers? Okay, well, you'll make it. <laughs> Just a little different. These Even tenured teachers have their problems now. So it's a new world. Okay, um, how many of you have been in a meeting sometime in the last, since, let's say since summer, that deals with SGOs? Oh, oh, how many of you are carried in with you today an SGO already done and already approved? Uh, oh, that's a little different. <laughs> I was really worried there. I thought, oh my God, it's all done. I have to go home. Okay, this is what I'd like to do today. I would like to make sure that everybody understands what's required by the state. So everything else that's not required by the state, you know is required by the local district. And if you think there's something wrong with it, that is, the local, that you think the local district has made a mistake of some sort, and really doing something, that you can complain to the right people. So then you complain to the state. Sometimes the local district thinks things are done by the state, and they're really not. So that's the first thing. Then I would like to actually produce a uh, SGO, uh, give you a partner to work with, make sure you've got somebody to work with because um, uh, you, need, you need somebody to talk to in this SGO business. But also um, actually start to develop one so that we begin to see what they really are. It's one thing to talk about them, it's another thing to see how they actually work out. Uh, I, I'd, li I'd like to take questions as we go, because I hate to have anything laying out there that you don't understand or something's at odds and you wait until the end and then we don't get to it. But you have to allow me, if it's something I'm going to get to later, to say to you, wait, or we can't deal with it now or see me afterwards. But I'd like to take the questions because it's silly to be at a workshop like this with this huge number of people 
and not be able to get your questions out. So that's the agreement we'll make. Now, to get here today, I went to the wrong hotel. <laughs> and when I got to that hotel, I couldn't get into it. So, so I went on the turnpike all the way to exit 8A, looking for the right from 9 to 8A. And I know that there's other people here who can identify with the um, directional challenge that that shows. Uh, but I finally did make it. So I'm, I tell you sometimes, well, I pressed the button, but nothing happened. What happens? Oh, OK. Do I have to do anything? Is it coming on? No. Ah, oh, there it is. Well, just let me make it a little bigger. There you go. Now, please look at the title. <laughs> How many of you know what an SLO is? How many of you have written student learning objectives? Okay, this change to this change to SGOs has some differences in them, but they are essentially the same thing. They are basically the same thing. In New York State, they've never changed the name. They still call it student learning objectives. New Jersey's changed the name, and now it's student growth objectives. But they are the same thing. There's some differences that we'll talk about, but essentially they are the ways we touch student learning. Now let's see if this works. Ha <laughs> ha! There we go. So take a look at these. At, at what the um, the definitions are. Long-term goal the teacher set for groups of, of uh, students. Um, now, long-term goal is not exactly the best words. They're long-term objectives. A goal is something that you work at, but you never expect to achieve. You know, there's something that you, that you write that say, my goal is that um, all the children will be um, will be part of a, of a system to bring peace to the, to the country. Well, that's a nice goal, but you don't really know if you're ever going to achieve it. There's lots of goals. We all carry goals like that. Um, we make those, <laughs> we set them every, every, um, every year. These are goals that we expect to achieve. And they mean that they're, they're, there's some expectation on our part that that's what we hope for for the children that we see. Um, please note it can be for, group, for, for groups, of, uh, groups of, of students. Specific and measurable. How many of you are sitting on a goal now or an objective now in anything that you're teaching that has a specific and measurable outcome? You could say what it is. You, you, it's got something that you could measure. Not very many. So that produces some difficulty. That's the first part. Secondly, um, align to New Jersey curriculum standards. Be careful, because we've had these standards for many years. And it's, for, for many of those years, it's what uh, the use of those standards was very, very little, very limited. We didn't use them much. Those standards were developed by groups of people who taught in the colleges mainly. They came together. Somebody said to them, what do you think the kids in New Jersey should know and be able to do? And they sat down and they said what they were, and somebody wrote all those things down. That's why we have so many of them. I call those standards democracy gone amuck. <laughs> because nobody argued. Once you had it down there, it was there forever. I was just saying at lunch, where else would you find in New Jersey standards right now in social studies, there is a standard that says all the students in the state of New Jersey should be able to um, understand and talk about the Hang Dynasty. Now, that's because the guy that was on that committee was from Rutgers, and he taught the Hang Dynasty. <laughs> and that lives to this day, though I have yet to be in any classroom or see any curriculum, and I've read thousands of curricula in social studies that has anything at all to do with the Hang Dynasty. When this talks about what, what objectives you're going to measure, it's up to you, and we really have to work about 
at what's worth measuring? This is the question we're going to ask ourselves over and over. Um, based on reliable student learning data, that means you have to have data before you measure and after so that you can deal with growth. These objectives have to deal with growth. Now, that doesn't mean you have to have a number. It doesn't mean you're not allowed to exercise your opinion. It means that you have to find some way <clears throat> to deal with growth. And we'll talk about how do you deal with growth. And finally, well, first part, it has to be ambitious and achievable. I love that part. <laughs> I can't think of anything anybody wants to do every, anywhere that is an achi <laughs> ambitious and achievable. And I'm not sure that, sure that those two words really go together very well. It may be ambitious, but you, <laughs> nobody's going to be able to do it. That's good. Or maybe achievable, uh, but it's not worth it. It's not ambitious at all. We talked a little about it this morning with the um, uh, uh, um, people with it, not, uh, the supervisors, and we'll do that again. All right, this is the actual language from the, uh, from the book, the material. It says that you have to have one of these, uh, two of these objectives because you're teaching subject matter that does not have test data. It doesn't have any standard test data. And what it doesn't have is S, it doesn't have any, um, well, it doesn't have any test data. So you need two by law, by, by, by rules, you need two. How many of you are, do, are being asked to do more than two? Not very many. How many of you are asked to do only one? Well, the rules are you're supposed to do two. Uh, the people that have test data behind them are asked to do only one. So it depends on what you do. And then it says that they, um, that they must be checked by the principal or his or her designee, which is sometimes the uh, supervisor, sometimes people on a committee, and that um, the supervisor will review the scores. Question. Sure, everything you teach counts as a, t as a course. Doesn't matter what it is. But if they're taking the AP test, your, your goal may be for 10% um, or 30, 40% or more to get three or better on the AP test. Now, you don't know what they're going to do this year, but you do know what they did last year. So you can build the pre-data pre on what happened last year and the post-data on what you hope for this year. Now, before I go any further, I want to talk about the big elephant in the room. The scoring is a big elephant in the room. And after this, we're going to hold it and let it go. But you have a choice in how you look at your, at your SGO. You can be ambitious and write an SGO that, you, that, that pushes you and then it will be harder and you're more likely not to reach it. Or you can be, um, uh, what was the other word? What was it? Achievable. And you can write it so that you know you can achieve it because you already have it or you know that it's possible. And then you're going to look terrific. And that's the problem. I had a teacher explain to me today, last week, this is a teacher I know well, and she's teaching in a special ed classroom. And she said, I am trying to teach the kids cause and effect so that they can use the technology. If they don't understand cause and effect, press here, you get this, do this, you get that. If they don't understand that, they can't use the technology. So I use a whiteboard and I teach them in this way. And she goes, blah, blah, blah. And I said, and how many kids do you think will be able to do that by the time you finish? These are some kids can't say their names. We're not talking about, we're talking about profoundly uh, handicapped kids. And she said, I think 90% of them will be able to do that on the whiteboard and they'll be able to transfer it into a smaller piece. I said, well, there's a good SGO. You can just write it that way and that'll be fine. And she said, I, I would never write it that way. She said, I would write 50%. I said, why would you write 50% if you think 90% can do it? And she explained to me. She said, at 50%, my uh, supervisor is going to look at my work and say, she has exceeded her standard and I will be a distinguished teacher. If I write it at, 50, at 
I may even reach my goal, but I will only reach my goal. And it will not be that I have exceeded my goal. I will only have reached my goal. And so I will not look as good as I would look if I, hit, um, if I put down 50%. I said, oh my God, we could set back education before we even begin. Because the problem is, if we all do that, we will affect the expectations for these kids so terribly that what we want for them will be lost in our own statistical stuff. So I call upon you all to be professional teachers to hope for your kids the most you can hope for them, and to be sure that you write that down no matter what, that you're hoping the best that you can hope for them. Then you work with me for the state of New Jersey and everyone else we can talk about in advocacy to make sure that that doesn't happen, where the lower, the person that expects less gets better uh, reviews than the person who expects more. That does not help us. Now I stop. Yes? You have to shout because my hearing's not so good in here. No, you have to, you have to, you're going to have to shout. Is there some kind of rationale section on your SGO where you have to reason why you are? No, yes, well, I don't know. It depends on what form you're using. Um, that's, that's the next piece. That's a good question. And maybe that's something that you all ought to think about. Have a, have a place where you have to justify uh, the, the, the percentage. You have to base it on available data. So if you have available data that nobody can do it now, then 50% looks terrific. Even though in your head you know, I can get 90% of the kids to do this. 50% looks good. If you have data that says 50% can do it already, then 50% then doesn't look so good. So remember, it's based on available data. It's just something you have to keep in your head, though, because as we talk about these things and what's required, you have to be able to think about what's required and what's expected. Yeah. Exactly. You heard her? She said, okay. She said, if you're in a district where, you're, where your performance on, this, uh, on these SGOs is going to affect your merit pay, then you're going to write 50, not 90. And you're going to do it in good faith because the faith is to let them know. So I don't know with her. I really don't argue with her. It, 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 it's, a, um, it's an issue that we're going to have to deal with over time. Um, there's all sorts of problems related to it. We, uh, we tend to judge our kids um, in lower level classes as uh, far less able than kids in higher level classes. And at the same time that this is going on, we've got the Common Core, which asks us to ratchet up what our children can do. And don't let the art teachers believe that they're not part of that, because they are. The art teachers have every reason to be part of that idea of ratcheting up what kids can do and how they think. So it, it could work to the disadvantage of the system and to the children, but I certainly do understand it. Okay, I'm only going to take a couple more because we'll never get out of this. Yeah. The principals have to approve the SQ. Yes. Yeah, well, that's good. I mean, if we have really good principals, we'll get some. She's saying that the principals have to have to approve uh, it so they can watch over this kind of thing, and it can be part of their work. And and that is a good point that we have to work with the principals so that they understand it and that you can feel comfortable. We'll talk again. We'll talk more about how you're judged when we get further along. But when as soon as we get to the idea of having a scored SGO, we hit this ambitious and and uh, achievable piece. 
There's somebody over there that wants to ask a question. Oh. Yeah, in the back. It depends. When we talk about the various ways that this can be done, in some cases, yes. In some cases, no. In some cases, the, the preliminary data you have says you can do more than that. So, you know, it depends on what we're talking about. Yes. Yes, we're going to talk about tiering, and I think that's that's part of the solution to deal with the tiering issue, and uh, we'll we'll do we'll deal with it in a minute. Okay, where oh she's got a she's got a here we go. Um, I was under the impression that if you did not write eighty percent, then you could not achieve a four as a teacher. No, I, I there's there, those are local. Did you hear what she said? There, those are local decisions. That can happen in a local town. It's not something that's part of this. And when we get to, I'm gonna hold, cut this off now, we'll come back to it later. Let's talk about this whole idea of how we write it. I want you now to spend a few minutes thinking about what it is that, that is important enough to measure. One of the real issues here is that you're gonna take a lot of time and energy to measure something. And I, the, the, the tendency is to talk immediately about the measurement. What do I got that's got that already? What do I wanna do with this or what that test I'm going to give? And I'm asking you to stop it for a moment and to think about what you're teaching. If you've got paper and pencil, write down one of the courses you're teaching, anyone. Teaching something? Anything, anything. Write down the name of a course. Okay, now you have this course. Shh, hold a minute, I'll give you a chance. I just, I just read a book called Quiet. I don't know if any of you have seen this book. Oh, some of you have. It's a great book. It suggests that there are people in the world that crave quiet that they do better when it's quiet. And that given the existing educational system and other systems, it's almost impossible to get it. You're always being asked to work in a group. You always have somebody who wants to interact. The values of the interaction are there, where in fact all you want to do, because you do your best work, when it's quiet. So I'm gonna give you now two or three minutes of quiet. How many of you are like that? Really would really crazy, oh wow. That's really unusual. Okay, let's see if we can actually give these people quiet. That is not talk. And give you a few minutes, uh, two minutes, just to think about what, you're, what it is that you're teaching that is important enough to, um, to measure. And then, um, how would you know if it happened? When you figure, just deal the first part. What is it important enough to teach? Okay, look up. Oh, it's lovely. <laughs> now, I want you to look at it again, but with this quality to it. 
Did you write down something that would embarrass you if the kids left your classroom and couldn't do or understand? That is, now I'll give you the, my example that I use all the time because it's so wonderful. When I was principal of South Brunswick High School, anybody here from South Brunswick? Ah, uh, my, uh, my fellow. When I was principal of South Brunswick High School, I used to have this nightmare, and it really was recurring. I would, uh, I'd go to sleep, and I'd, I'd have this dream that um, I was watching Jay Leno on his walk, you know, he'd ask people questions that would look really simple. And so I would, I would, in my dream, Jay Leno would stop some young person and say to him, um, what, uh, where is France? And the people would say, uh, the person would say, um, or where is France is what she said. And the kid would say, um, uh, it's in Iowa or it's in California or something like that. And then Jay Leno would turn to this young person and say, where did you go to high school? Oh, I would wake up every time, every time. And while I knew it was funny, I was hysterical about it. And Jay, I've never seen Jay Leno ask anybody where they went to high school, but I knew that. So I developed a fourth grade place geography test that every kid had to pass because I was so sure that this was a piece of <laughs> common knowledge that would embarrass me if somebody left South Brunswick High School and could not tell you what river ran through the center of the country, I mean, just simple little things like that that suddenly I realized, you know, half the student body probably doesn't know these things. So I, um, so I developed this uh, placement test. We used it, I'm sure we're not using it anymore. People thought I was crazy. But I couldn't tolerate the fact that there would be kids who would not know simple geography. Now, you look at your piece and see if it meets that test. I would be embarrassed if my kids left my class and couldn't do this or understand that or something of that sort. And then share your piece with somebody else near you or two or three and see if they agree or explain to them why this is an important piece. Okay? We've got well over 100 people here that basically do not know what they're doing. Like yes. the state passes this thing down and they don't really explain what it was. Last year, at the end of the year, for maybe about an hour in a faculty meeting, they glazed over what this thing is. The school year started, we still have no idea what they expect from us. And I asked two times from my principal, what do we need to do? And they said, don't worry about it right now. We're going to go over what it. What district in, are you in? We're going to go over it in October. I don't want to say, I don't want to get myself oh, in trouble. Oh, well, it doesn't matter. But, but like, it's amazing to me that they keep asking us to do things and they don't even know what they want us to do. Well, that's Not only the district, but the state. The state, it's like somebody's doing their job at top, they'll turn it down to the bottom. Well, that's... make it look like they're doing their job. This... Uh, and this is a weeding tool. That's what this is. The, uh, All this stuff is documentation that we're putting against ourselves to show what we're doing. The, the things that are required are very few. So it can be done easily. You all have SLOs. Yes, it's that's exactly lot. right. It's, it's a lot. for a teacher that's already doing a lot. Yes, it you know is. I mean? But you can, you, can, you can combine them because you can use them. I'm not worried about it. I'm doing what I always no, did. Exactly. I know I'm a good teacher. If they're going to bring you down, they're going to bring you down anyway. You'll have to, the, the real issue here is the, the ability to measure. You know what I did? This was my whole thesis in grad school. That I, I wrote a whole thesis on this, on assessment and pre-assessment pre and assessment. And yes. The end documenting everything. I did it for my oh. fourth graders in their journal. And my whole fourth grade oh. class, I documented it in their journal. Oh, so that's before, good. when I asked the, the principal, I said, what are we supposed to be doing? She wouldn't tell me. I didn't want to fall behind on my paperwork. I went and did it on my own. Yeah. I made up a little test for them and I had to yes. draw Or you could, use, you could use the journals. Yeah. The journals are very good for this. We can talk about that a little bit. Most of the school? You're teaching all children. I'm teaching other, other school districts told me, and other kids in other schools in my district said, oh no, our principal told us our SGLE has to be 20 kids. That's, it's not the state, it's your district. It's my district interpreting it different ways. Exactly. You have to go ask them. Go talk to the superintendent. Superintendent? Yes. Talk to the principal first. 
talk to the principal. And that's what they said. Yeah. No, in fact, it's really not even required. I'm going to put up the... That's the next thing I'm going to put up. I'm going to talk... I'm going to talk about the... Uh, Yeah, we're going to talk about types of SGOs now. Now watch this. Okay, time. 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 Oh, clap, clap. <laughs> They're all secondary people. <laughs> <laughs> okay, hold on. Hold on. Oh, good. If I can't get you quiet, I can't do that. <laughs> That's good. Now, let me just take the next step and then I'll take questions. The next thing you have to look at, now that you, did everybody have, to, if, if, you, if people didn't think it was important, you changed it, so you've now got something that it, you've discussed with people and you could defend as being important for your class? Anybody not have anything? Somebody back there? Still doesn't have anything? Oh no, he's taking pictures. <laughs> okay, now the next question is, who needs to be able to do this? Now you've got something that you want kids to do. Now here's the problem with that. That's not such an easy answer as it appears. Because you have in your class kids who can already do it. Yes. Now, let, let's, take a, uh, let's take an example somewhere. Give us somebody's got some simple thing. Um, kindergarten. Uh, I want them to be able to cut on the line. Okay. The she, he, she wants them to be able to cut on the line <laughs> in kindergarten. <laughs> yeah, you can, you can clean it up, you know. What? All right, so now have you pre-tested them? So you've got one who can, and you've got to have at least three or four who can almost close, and then you've got a whole bunch who can't. Yeah, okay, now let's take one from um, an, older, an older group. So that we have, uh, can you get her in the back? Yep. It's really hard to have an interactive group when you've got several hundred people here. But. Hi, I teach Hi. elementary school, but uh, color theory for my yes. fourth, fifth, and sixth graders. Yes. So they know the primary and secondary colors, because that's something I'd be embarrassed about if they left and they didn't know that. Okay, that's perfect. So now how many kids already know, let's say you're talking about fifth grade. Yeah, you know, I actually, I was just explaining. I did a pretest in sixth grade, and I really thought they would do really well because I've been teaching it since third grade. <laughs> I was amazed. I mean, I didn't want to do like, you know, breeze by, but I thought this is something they should know. Yeah. I had, I had maybe three 100s and it was only 10 questions. I, I had, m most of them were scoring 40 and 50. And then I had a couple that got like nine wrong. And I was like, who was your art teacher last year? And I mean, I knew it was me, but. <laughs> I, uh, I don't, I could not understand how they couldn't just get the uh, basics. Uh, I and love that. So that is yeah, the best yeah, story. I got, I got a lot of work. Yeah. I will tell that story everywhere because how, <laughs> how many of us have as a situation that what happens then is to say, who was that teacher who didn't teach that kid anything? How many times have we gone through that? I have a poem. I wish I brought it. It's called Who's to Blame? And each group blames the next one until it finally gets down to the kids, to the kindergarten teacher, and she says, uh, "It must be the family's problem." <laughs> and then you hear, then then there's a, a, a the last thing is from the father, and he said, um, uh, "That kid doesn't know anything." He said, "I guess I I, I I'm not sure that rascal's even mine." <laughs> but that is so common; we all do it. I have a great um, story. Um, Artemis Ward was a, um, was a um, humorist during the Civil War. 
there weren't many of those, but he was one. <laughs> yeah. And he was accused, he, he, they came to him and said uh, he had not done enough for the war effort. And he answered, he said, how can you say that to me? I have already sacrificed two cousins to this war effort, and I stand ready to sacrifice my wife's brother. <laughs> But that's where we all are. And here she's, a, she's the teacher. How fortunate for her. She's got baseline data. She found out where they are. And she can start to build her stuff. Yes. I just wanted to add to what you were saying. Is it, is it worthwhile to ask questions, written questions, of the children? Or is it better to give them the paints and then ask them the questions? Well, it depends on what you want to know. Well, that that's case, always the question of what you want to know. She wanted to know if they remembered what she told them, as, however she taught it, whatever experiences she gave them. She wanted to know if they could retain it. And she wanted to know if they could retain it intellectually in their heads. If she wanted to know if she could use it, if they could use it, that would be another question. And then she would have to have paints. So it doesn't matter as long as you're clear about what you want. The secret of this is to to have something you care enough about that you know what you, want, what you want for these children, and then to be able to find out whether, in fact, they have it or not. Over there, or somewhere. Um, well, well, she's getting to them. That, that's the hard part of this. It's, we, we think the hard part is the measurement, and it is. But the real piece of the measurement, and you put your finger on it absolutely, totally, is what do you want to know? Can you be specific enough to know what you want these children to be able to do so that you can properly measure it? Hi. So, um, I do have a question about what growth is because we had a similar uh, test that we came up with for our students, like she, she just revealed. And we were told by our administration that that is not growth. That is telling you how they scored on a test. It doesn't show application. It doesn't show that they know the information. It's just you're regurgitating. It's not growth. And therefore, we can't use that as an SGO. So we cannot use a test like that for an SGO. Well, there's, there's a rule made at your local district. Do you, do you hurt her? So you know that it's a rule made at the local district. They want to make that rule. That's fine. So if you, you have to explain to the principal, I, at the moment, only care if they can remember it. Then I'll care about whether they can use it. But the principal says it doesn't count if they just remember it. We want to make sure they can go further. Superintendent, Superintendent whoever it may be. You can say, OK, then we'll develop a, a way to find out if they can use it by developing a hands-on test, as suggested over here, where you ask them to do something with these, with these uh, colors that show they understand the, the uh, primary and secondary colors. This is no, there's, no, there's no rule here. There's only good sense here. And it all builds from the same thing. What do you want for these children? Yes. My district is unhappy with skill and fact-based SGOs. They are looking for more um, abstract thinking skills and um, uh, critical thinking. Do you have okay. any suggestions? Sure. That's easy enough. Just make sure that you don't ask kids to think critically about something they don't know anything about. <laughs> Well, well, listen, you're in a state where the, for the last 10 years at least, children have been asked to write um, essays, persuasive essays, uh, and make up all the facts. Yeah. They've been asked to write, you, should there be this, should this happen or that, and there's been no fact. Now, I spent a lot of time, because I was at the state dealing with this question, on where would that skill be needed? Where, you have, you, where we ask you to be persuasive about something about which you know nothing. <laughs> and I came to the conclusion that we were training the children in the state of New Jersey for cocktail parties. I couldn't figure out where else one would care 
to make a, that we can make an argument where we don't know anything. So you want to teach children to make an argument, but you contain the ability to teach them how to build knowledge. And if you don't have, if you don't teach them how to build knowledge, they will not be able to go forward. And I say that because the Common Core has at its base the ability to read text closely. And the word text can be used for a picture, that is a text. For an arts performance, that's a text. For a, uh, for a uh, dance performance, that's a text. And you want your children to be able to describe it, to be able to analyze it, compare it to something else or to each other. And then you want them to be able to develop an opinion about it, an argument. I think this is good because, or I, uh, my favorite question, I have an arts question, I'm gonna use it again this week, um, where you let children describe three or four pieces and then look at the comparison of them. And then you ask kids the following question. We want to hang one of these pictures in the school. Which picture would be best for this school? Now that's a highly critical question, and it requires the kids to apply all these things. But you can't do it if they haven't learned how to describe the picture, how to see it in its complexity, and how to deal with it. I, you know, I, I have a hobby horse, which I get on every once in a while, on the issue of training audiences. If you folks, if, if all of us, do not teach our children how to respond to art, performance, and music, and, and dance, we will have no audiences. If you go to a, to, a, um, to a symphony orchestra concert, you're lucky if you see anybody under 50. If you go to a museum, you see children because parents drag them, but they don't necessarily know how to look at what they're seeing. So the issue of critical thinking is of great importance, but it is not of more importance than the skill set I mean, we want those kids in kindergarten to be great artists, but we want them to be able to cut first. Then they can cut some wonderful shapes and they can do all sorts of free things, but first we want to make sure that they can cut. So we build these things so that we're sure that every kid has got the bottom layer there. If they don't have the fundamental things, we're, we're doing only half the job. Yes? Uh -huh. My principal told me I had to have a portfolio for every student in my school. Oh, that's nice. 570 students. Oh, a lot and of portfolios. I have, a, I have to have an SGO for every grade level. But I think, but he also sits there and says to me, they're just handing this down to me and I'm not sure what's going on yet. So um, um, now. You can write an SGO for each of your classes or you can write an SGO for all of your classes. One that can if, apply to all of them? Maybe. If you can. Maybe you want to do one for K to two, and three, four differently. You, that's what's on the board now. This is the population this thing serves. You have a course and you've written something that's of importance that you really care about. We have to figure out how we're going to measure it. But before we decide how we're going to measure it, we have to decide Who's it for? Now there is no rule, if you notice, that says it must be for all the children. There is something deep in the heart of principles that makes them want to do something for all children. However, it's their call and they approve it, so, so be it. Wait, 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 wait. Let me get at least a few. They, what's called for is that some, the next thing you specify is what group of children is this for? Now let's take the colors out here. Let's assume it's okay to memorize something, like the multiplication tables, or the primary and secondary colors. Let's assume that. Now, she's got one kid who can do it already. So let's assume she's got 10 kids in her classroom, and she's got one that can do it already, and four that can almost do it. So she can have a tiered, a tiered result. One kid already can do it, so you don't have, it will achieve 100%. You feel pretty safe in that. 
the next kid after four months of instruction, uh, the next four kids will get 100% on the test. Then there are six kids, or four, four six, five, six kids, I lost track. The rest of the kids will be able to, uh, will be able to get them all correct uh, in, um, in six months, or they'll be able to get 90% of it correct in four months, whatever you want. That is a tiered population. All the kids are not going to achieve the same thing because they don't all start out at the same spot. So you can do a, 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 a SGO that deals with some children, and it's, the only trouble is it's got to be built on preliminary data. If she didn't know, even though she thought she knew, she would probably be wrong. Because if you did what she thought she should do, she would have been, she would have had everybody doing it. She would have thought they all did it already. She taught it to them. Why wouldn't she think they all could remember over one little summer? But they didn't remember. So you have to deal with some data. Now look at this. Just let's look at this to make sure we're clear. Um, you can write an SGO if you want every child to att attempt and you want every child to reach an X score. That's over here, the 80%. Every child will score 80% or better on this. Uh, every child will score 70% um, uh, or better, whatever it is. It's all children in, uh, in, in, a given, um, in a given course or for a given population. The next one is tiered. I know what my pretests are, and it shows that there are 10 kids here, 10 kids here, 10 kids here, and my hope for them on my pretest is different, or it shows that they're different. And so I'm going to write an SGO that's got tiers. Some of the kids will achieve 100%, some of the kids will achieve 80%, some of the kids will achieve 7%, 70%. But that's because I know where they started from. And based on that, I can tier this SGO so that different populations have it. Now you can also, and here's where you're going to run into trouble with your um, administrators often, you may also take a specific group of children or a specific skill. Now it might be all right to say, this is my SOGO. I'm going to have eight kids in my classroom be able to reach this goal. They will get 100% on the test at the end of the year. I'm only going to take eight of them because the other ones are doing fine, but these kids are so far behind that I'm going to give them my energy and my efforts because they are so important. And the others will come along and they'll grow and all that's good, but my SGO, the thing I want to be judged on, is whether these kids who are having trouble now will be able to do something at the end. Our attempt over the years has been to avoid these kids. Somebody told me today they were going to average their score. And I guess that's a lot of people do it. Well, that means the only thing you have to do is worry about the kids at the bottom is that you have somebody smart enough at the top to pull them up. Or maybe they're absent that day and they don't take the test at all. That'll raise your average with no trouble. I mean, for those of you that know, the state of New Jersey just accomplished massive amounts on that. They raised the score of the, um, of the SAT by 10 points. That looks wonderful. The SAT average went up 10 points. But 1,400 fewer kids took the test this year than took it last year. So the kids that scored at the bottom, their scores didn't count. So look at, the t look at your results and say, well, no, I'm not really going to do all the kids this year. Now, somebody said, well, in my school, you have to do 20. OK, I'm going to do the t bottom 20. Or I have to do 30. Or I'm going to do the bottom 30. Or I'm going to do all of my kids, but I'm going to do some of them will grow 30%, some of them will grow 50%, some will grow 18% based on my pretest. There is nothing, or I can say, the, what I care about most here is these colors. So I don't care what else anybody else does. My SGO is only to take those kids who don't know anything about these colors and make sure they do when they leave here. And it's not just knowing it, it's applying it and all that other stuff, but they're the ones I care about. So out of my 20 kids, these are the ones that I'm writing my SGO on. Now we can have all hell break loose. That's the next piece. Yeah, oh, we need some help here. How many of you have da data in front of you now that says, I can't do that? That won't be allowed in my school. Oh, good. What? <laughs> Can you just clarify, because in my district, 
They're struggling trying to understand if I'm a high school art teacher and I teach several different courses, like maybe I teach photography, I teach uh, ceramics, do I need to have two SGOs per course? No, no. no, but you need one SGO for each course. You do have Well, to I don't know. I, no, it depends on your district. You need two SGOs for yourself. And how you build them is really up to you and your district. Okay. Whatever rules are there. Your district does it differently. OK. OK, in her district, they choose one class and do two. Yeah. You can do it any way you want. As long as your district tells you what to do, it doesn't matter. You need two of them to go forward. How you write them, the way that you want to write them, I want to write something that affects all the children, so I'm going to take my, do you have a survey class? Whoever it was that was talking. Hey, uh, where's the person that just spoke? Uh, do you have a survey class, a class that affects lots of kids? Yes, you might want to take that class because that's the one that needs you the most. I mean, and if there's rules in the school that you have to choose one class or you have to choose another class, that's the way it is. And what you do, now, here's what you do. You do what you're told to do in terms of that. And then you do the kind of advocacy that good teachers have done forever. You show the impact of that. You talk to your principal about the impact and you talk about the effect of it on you and on your students so that you're, so that you're arguing from, with some data. And we do that, all of us, sooner or later. But before you do it, try it. Then you have to put your first ones in by November 22nd, and then you have until, when is it? February 15th to revise them. Now, this is what I told the people this morning, and I repeat it to you. Every teacher is a developer. Sometimes you wonder about that, but they are. You can't be a teacher and not a developer. And what makes you a developer? Well, you try things out, and then you revise it to make it work. You do not have the capability of getting it right all the time out of the head, out of, the head of Zeus. You try it, and then you do, change it because this happened, or that happened, or you found out something new, or you went to a workshop, or something happened. That makes you a developer. I said this morning, what's well, true, not all teachers are designers. That is, sometimes they have trouble designing it when I tell you you have to design an SGO. That's trouble, you need some help. But you do not help, need help in being a developer. Automatically, you do what you teach your children to do in art. You should be the best developers in the building, because you teach your children to do that in art, and music, and theater. Try it, practice it, make it better, change this, I'll give you notes, whatever it may be. You are experts on the ability to try something out and change it. Do not fight with the administration until you've tried it. Then you will have data, and then you will be effective. But you just have to be careful that you're making the argument in, on the terms of the children, what's best for the children in this school. And when you've done that, the question always is, it's never I'm gonna go in and tell, you should do it this way. It's always, what do you want for the children? This is what I want for the children. Is that what you want for the children too? And if we're agreed, then we should think about this or do that or whatever it may be. I told a parent when I was a school board member, I told a parent who did not like the way we were doing something in town, I told her to move. <laughs> what are you gonna do? I mean, okay. You don't like it, but this is the, what we think is best for the children. If we're in disagreement about what we hope for the children, we cannot work together. If we're in disagreement about what, if we, if we agree on what we want for the children, but we want to do it differently, then we can work it out. We can work out anything. So I'm asking you to try it, whatever the rules are, and then make sure you're armed with what's required, and then um, do the fighting. Yes. Oh, yes, you're going to have to hand now. It depends on what school you're in. It's a good question. She asked, what paperwork is involved with this? Now, 
how many of you have received from anybody who's working in this area a six-page form to develop an SGO? And that's because, now you can say Willa said this, this is a, that's because the state of New Jersey has put out a direction book, a guidebook for SG, developing SGOs. Many of you may have seen that. It's very well written. It's got a lot of good suggestions, but it says right in the front of it, the only things required by the state are the things written in red. And in that 36 page book, there are three paragraphs written in red. <laughs> All the rest are recommendations from the state about what they think would make a good SGO. Part of those recommendations is that six page form. It may not be the one you think is best. And if nothing else, you would need to convince your department or your working group or your PLC or whatever it is, that perhaps we could edit that form because it is very long and much of it is not relevant. So you need to see whether you can get permission to edit that particular form. Otherwise, it takes you twice as long to do what I, that I'm doing now. We have a question right here. Yeah. Um, of these types of SGOs, what is the state requiring? Can it be any one of the four or two of the same? What does the state say that we are required to do for the types? For the what? For the types of SGOs, the general. Oh, it's not. It's saying these are the types. So you we need can, to do two SGOs, and, and choose and, the appropriate type for the thing that you want to measure, and make sure that you've done it well. Okay, so the state doesn't care what kind, just no, as long as they're one state, of those four. Now, the state has put out a, a statement, again, suggestion, that you not use the tiered because they think it's too hard. However, it's so valuable that I know many people using it anyhow. It is not a rule. When I was in the, when I was in, um, in the local district, my job was to tell what the state told us we must do and what the state told us it would be nice to do. And many of you are gonna to have to do that. Is this something that we must do from the state? Is this something we must do from the district? Or is this something some people are just suggesting would be nice to do? Yeah, we have some questions back here. Yeah. Okay, I have no prior data. We've never tested, it's a K to eight school. Yeah. So I tried to do a pre-test on my own with fifth grade and I gave them an elements, and elements of design paper that with little boxes and a question, you know, had three, draw three types of lines and draw three organic shapes and three geometric shapes. Well, they did terrible, but does that count for my yes. data? My oh. free data? That's okay. wonderful. You're going to look terrific no matter what anybody does. <laughs> and, I, and, and also we are block scheduling to where each quarter I have another fourth grade, a different fourth grade, a uh. different fourth grade, a different fourth grade. So if I, if I do the tiered thing and say one kid is going to finally pass at the end and five are going to do great in the beginning, how can I, I don't understand how I'm supposed to do that. You've given a test. <laughs> okay. You have data. It shows that all the children in your class cannot do this. You may have a range of bottom scores. Now you need to say, I've given a pretest, and nobody can do this well, well enough. Which you have to decide what well enough is. 50% well enough, okay. Nobody can get 50%. At the end of my quarter, are you listening? At the end of my quarter, 50% will be able to do this, or 60% or 80%. And each quarter, you're gonna start again and do it again. Because you're going to, because you need to, be, because what you're talking about is an SGO that only affects the kids in any quarter. So you have to say, given the six classes I have with them. Now I would put in a condition on this tiering that says the only kids I'm going to count are those that have been there half the time or more. So that there's an attendance issue related to it. If you only see the kids six times a year, and, and you want to teach them something, and half of them only come three out of the six, you can't expect to have the same result. So you need to write that into the condition of your, of your SGO. Well, uh, you mentioned um, a, a, a form 
that gave directions on how to write an SGO that came from the state. It's a template. It's a template. Is there a name to that template? No, the name of the book is a guidebook on SGOs. It's online. What is it called? All right, so it's on the yeah. DOE site. Achieve NJ. Just look at Achieve NJ. You'll find the book. And if you do it online, you'll see which parts are in red. Okay, I have to wait till it calms down again. Okay, wait, 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 we can't go on. We have a question here when you're ready. Okay. Hi. Um, in my district, well, in my wait, wait, wait. You don't, have, you don't have everybody listening to you. Sorry. And I'm hoping this works for a lot of the secondary. We've just submitted and had our pre-assessment approved. So at this point, we've decided because the majority of us are trying to teach the elements and principles of design, right? Mm -hmm. So that we're specifically using critique. Yeah. And that. We are hoping by our lessons we do daily, we're obviously teaching specifically line, shape, form, et cetera, and the principles. If giving our pre-assessment and having them without the knowledge of critique, they tend to only want to say what they see. They right. don't go into the inferences and the evaluation of it. And that through the year as we're teaching them and then giving specific four lessons on description, evaluation, Etc. that by the end of the year, we hope that they will be able to look at a picture and not only from us teaching about critique, but also by each lesson teaching each of the elements and principles that then obviously their first essay would not be very well rounded, but then after all those lessons at the end, they should have a very strong critique. Yes, now what do you have to do to make that work on a, on a, uh, on a goal, uh, you know, on an SGO? You need to be able to say in your, in your goal what the five elements of design are that you care about, or six, or whatever number it is, and what they are. Then you just simply have to count up how many of them show up in the preliminary critique, and how many of them show up in the next critique, so that you begin to see this number growing. Now, because this is a, a because of the way it's designed, the, this piece, you have to say, Given the, the pretest and the critiques that we have, um, either all of our kids will uh, get at least four out of these eight elements of design, or six out of the eight, or whatever you want, or you can say um, the kids that could do nothing will be able to do 40%, and the kids that could do more will get 60%. You can do it either tiered or all, but whatever you do, you have to be specific enough that you're not kidding yourself when you get the next piece. Oh, this sounds a lot better than the beginning. You have to be able to count. We've got some questions up front. That, okay. Hi. I teach Hi. high school, and I teach five different classes. So I was going to write an SGO for each individual class, um, just because they're so different. Now, my question is, does the state only evaluate you on two? If you write more than two SGOs, do you get evaluated on all of them, or do you get evaluated on only two? The state does not evaluate you. There is nothing in any piece of information we have here that the says the state will evaluate you. The state gives directions to the local district, and the directions they give to the local district is use the SGOs for 15% of the evaluation of these teachers. They do not say how, then they say each one has to have at least two SGOs. They do not say how they're used. What you have to have at the end, the, uh, the supervisor then says, okay, they look at, they approve your SGO and they say, yes, I'm going to use this. And you say, um, uh, I'm going to do uh, all of the kids at 80% or above. And this, the, the, the supervisor or the principal, whoever is doing the scoring says, well, if you achieve that, I'm going to give you a four. If you, come, if, if you exceed that, I'm going to give you a four. If you meet that, I'm going to give you a three. If you don't read it, I'm going to give you a two. And if you really can't get to it, I'm going to give you a one. And that's what they use for evaluation of you. But that decision is made between you and your supervisor or whoever. It's a principal, it says, but it could be the supervisor, whoever it may be. 
so that, that those decisions are made there. It is not the state. In fact, it would be a lot easier if it was a state, because if it was a state, we could go and fight with them. But there's 650 districts in the state of New Jersey. Each charter school is a district by itself. So there's 650 districts, and each of them is empowered to make these decisions beyond what is required. So I wish I could answer your question, but that's all I can do. Ask a quick question about if you can explain the difference between a benchmark, what a benchmark for the students that we, because my principal can't clearly explain benchmark SGO. He says they're two separate for the arts. They're two separate. You can put them together, but you, the, the uh, benchmarks tend to be on units or smaller time things. So you might want to put them together so you hit a longer period of time. But they can enlighten each other. What? I think they'd like to know what a, what a benchmark is. Well, it depends on how you... How does that compare to an SGO? Oh, a, a benchmark is something that you set for, uh, for approval, usually in regard somewhat enough to grading, that you've met this or you've met that or whatever it may be. These don't have anything to do with grading. You can make them deal with grading, but this is not a grading issue. This is a self-assessment data. And I don't know, I mean, benchmarks have mean something different in different districts, too. I'm really at a disadvantage here because I don't know, you know, I don't know how many districts are represented here, but believe me, there's more than I could probably manage. Um, so you have to ask. I'm concerned with the direction of the SGO development in my district. We were directed by my supervisor, who is a math supervisor, for elementary art and she basically directed us how to come up with a test, and there is no consideration given to uh, what exactly we're measuring at this point. It's just a bunch of random questions. I don't know what to do next. Talk to her. Here's what you do. You go to her and you say, and now this is, you say to her, do you have any hopes for the children in the arts? <laughs> I mean, it's seriously, it's, seriously, she probably does not. So you have to say to her, I, it's my field. I care about what these children have in the arts, and what I care about is the, are these things, and you give her three things. Don't give her any more, she's a mathematician. So <laughs> let her know that these, these three things are most important to me. I would like to measure these three things, and, or this one is the, the, the most important, and I would like to measure this. Go to her with a fully developed argument based on those children because she is doing what she's told to do. Go to the arts department and have them do a pre and post test. And you have to help her to get over that. Or you can say, we have, yeah, we have question here. you used to be able to say, and it doesn't work so much anymore, but you used to be able to say, I saw Willa and she said, <laughs> it doesn't work so well anymore. Now, these SGOs are specifically de designed for the township to evaluate how a particular teacher is working that year, if that teacher is leaving and a new teacher is coming in. Before the end of the year? November 30th. What? <laughs> November 30th. Oh, well, I would write some uh, SGOs for the new teacher so and that's what give my, them to my her. Question. But yeah. are they going to be evaluated on No, somebody should go over them with the new teacher and see if they fit her desires or how it works. She has until um, February to redo them. But, but I give her something that let her you know uh, you've taught the course and this is the kind of thing that interests you. So that I can do something but they can change it. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. That's the glory of life. Hi. Hi. Does the pre and post test have to be the same? It, it, should oh, pre and post yes, test? but stop using the word test because the last thing that you want is a test. What you want is data. So the pre and post collection of data should be the same. Somebody in the cl that class before said um, they do self-portraits and they're looking for ratio and proportion and they've got four things on ratio and proportion that they hope to see in the, in the uh, pictures at the end. So they have everybody do a, a self-portrait at the beginning of the class then they mark them, not for the kid, just for themselves, and they keep them. 
and at the end of the class they do another self-portrait and they expect to see these things now in the self-portrait that they didn't see before. The use of student work in the arts and music and theater is really critical. In music, we had the people last time who wanted to um, do, um, wanted every kid in the beginning music classes to be able to read music. And so they've got a tiered thing where the kids look at music one way or another. Up, up, some of them can, some of them cannot. But there is nothing that says you have to give a test, nothing. It says you have to measure. And measure, you know, if, if you gathered data from your art show last year, if you'd gone around your art show and saw the number of things you had and the you had a measure of the quality, you could say in next year's art show, I expect to show this. Most of you haven't done that. But you do collect the data at the beginning. That's wonderful. We're teaching five sections of third grade, which would yes. equate to about 125 third graders. Do we have to evaluate all 125, or can we pick one specific classroom, which would have 25 students? Only if you have a reason to do it. I mean, it sounds to me, you could find 25 kids who can't do X and use them instead of 125. But to choose one classroom, you'd have to figure out why that class. If you have a group of kids who are special ed kids and they come in, you might be able to use them without, with, good, with good argument. But give yourself something to hang your hat on. Don't make your decisions on the basis of uh, you know, what would be easiest. The, the, the problem here is administrative ease. You might get administrative ease, but you will not get improvement of instruction. And you need to take the high road. Even if the administration doesn't, even if the school teacher next door doesn't, even if no one else does, you need to take the high road. SGOs can be helpful for children. They can concentrate on you on, and your intentions, and they can make a difference for what happens to the kids in your classrooms. But it means that you have to take them seriously as methods to a focus, not as a method to get over the rules. Oh, is that how, that's how much I have left? Oh, oh, I had another question. <laughs> sorry, um, just quickly, our district is really discouraging us from using portfolios or anything like that. We've, we've said this is what we want to do, this is how we want to measure them, we're willing to do all of this. No, we want to pre and post test, test them on something, you can test them on third marking period, I want to see the numbers, that's all I want to know is the numbers. And we try to explain to them the population we have, we have our general students, we have bilingual, we have special oh, yes. ed, severely special ed, mixed in with everybody, the easiest thing and the, and the best thing for them would be portfolios because then the children don't feel left out and they do see growth. Yeah, I mean, the testing with some of these kids, they, they're so ang anxious over it, they get sick. Well, listen to my advice again. Do what you're told for this first round. Then go and explain why this doesn't work. Use the data, collect the data, and use the data you have. I mean, it could be that the, the, uh, the district wishes to have a, a definition of art that is nothing but the, the, um, the pre and post test with no, no importance at all. Why waste the energy? I mean, it's got to be something that you want to test, or at least you have some great desire to test, or you're not even a great desire, but it's worth, the data's worth something. Okay, I'm gonna take, um, I don't wanna hold everybody here. Okay. Um, oh, yes, this. <laughs> Do you all know SMART goals? I mean, I can't believe everybody hasn't had a SMART goals lesson. Oh, I was afraid of that. The difference between, oh, wait, let me finish. The difference between a goal that says everybody's going to be able to um, jump to the, to the, you know, I love this goals. Goals, I think I'm going to try to jump to the moon. And how, what I'm going to do is every day I'm going to go outside and jump a little higher. <laughs> oh, I didn't make it to the moon, so what? That's, you, you get goals like that. Um, or you get something that has no goal at all. I'm going to give a test. What test? Oh, any test will be okay. Nobody cares. These are things that have no, um, no, no reason. And the one thing, if you write down nothing else, what you want your SGO to be is sensible. Make it sensible for the children. Make it sensible for you. Don't let it be off the top of your head. 
Oh, she says with some. Um, this is the traditional um, definition of a SMART goal. It should be specific. We've had lots of examples. Um, you know, I want to know this, and this is uh, this is the specific thing. I want to know if they know the elements of design. I want to know if they know the six elements of design. That's different than saying they should know about design because there might be eight elements of design in some book. You have to say what design, what the elements of design are that you care about. You have to be specific enough that it works. Secondly, it's got to be measurable. Now, you can measure almost anything. If you get away from the pre and post, you can measure, you can, I, I beg of you to use student work. M measuring student work is really the most valuable thing and it's great for kids. Uh, there it is, uh, ambitious and attainable, don't forget that. Uh, results driven, this is what we hope to succeed with. And um, timed, that is I'm going to measure again you know, I'm going to teach this for four months, or this class only meets for four times, or whatever it may be, so that you know how long it is between the time you give the pretest and the time you expect to find it. Nobody's got any questions about that. All right, now look at your SGO that you've written. I mean, you haven't written it completely, but you've got to start. And say to yourself these questions. Is the content of your SGO important? If it's not, then do it anyhow, keep a note for yourself, and let the supervisors know, I do not think this is important. I'm going to do it, I'm going to measure it, but it is not what I think is important. Now, if you're non-tenured and you don't think it's important, see if you can find something that you both will agree is important. If you're tenured, you have an equal problem now. So you wanna make sure that you and the supervisor both have agreement that it's worth doing. If you have agreement and she doesn't, um, you have to try to find an arbitrator. Um, can you work collaboratively with whom? Whenever possible. You could tell even here, the few moments you had to talk with each other, you can begin to, to focus your head. Um, what pre-assessment do you have or can be relied on? You can use a pre-assessment from the year before. If you have kids who are in, in band two, and last year they gave a test on band one about whether you could read music, then all you need is the data from band one from last year to build your, your objective on band two. It does not mean that you have to do the pretest. It means that you have to have pretest pre available material. The year before is very good, uh, but you know have to be careful about the year before as we saw back here with the colors. Um, is the objective um, clear to a cold reader? That's really necessary. You've got to give your objective to somebody who doesn't know. Can you understand this? Does this make sense to you? Yeah. And finally, uh, how will you measure it? Uh, the scale from one to four is the final thing. It, it, did you reach or did you exceed the requirements that you set for yourself? Did you meet the requirements? That's the three. Did you not re or did you um, did we come down less than that? That's it. Yes. 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 She asked. She said the color was something they should know. So since they should have known it, can you use it? Yeah. I mean that happens all the time. They should know the multiplication tables, but they don't. So you have to use them if it's critical to you. No, it's, if it's critical to you, then you have to teach them those things. And the teacher that follows you should be able to count on them. You have to teach them what she knows now is she's gonna to have to teach it differently because whatever she did with it last time didn't work. They didn't carry it forward. Should this be small? Okay, I'm sorry. Should these be small or, or something grand, like a whole portfolio? Ah, by the end very of the good. I, I don't know. I, I tend, for the first time around, to keep them more manageable. But I think in the long run, they are meant to cover the most important things you have in your class. And I ask you to think about what are the most important things. Now, let me explain what that means. There are lots of little skills 
that you could test, like are they able to color a picture, do they stay in the line, etc. But what you would look for is what's the end result of that. And that's what she wasn't looking for in the number. Sooner or later, I mean in the, in the picture, what she, she wants them to know these colors so that they can use them, as you suggest, to do something, either to, to make new colors or to whatever she wants them to do. So it would be easier, if you can, to test on the outcome on the thing that the minor skills lead to. Let me give you an example. If you want to know if a kid can play the piano, you do not ask him to play his, his um, scales. Though you know that he needs those scales and you check them off in your book, yes, he can do the scales, no, he can do the scales, but it is not your overall purpose. If you want to know if he can play the piano, you listen to him play at his recital. You listen to him when he plays a whole piece and he puts these things together. And that's what you're looking for, too, here. You're looking for those times when they put together all these little skills to be able to do something with them. Now, it, as we begin to learn to do this, it could be that they're not going to do the great artwork. You know, you can't, if you want to know if they can draw, you're eventually going to ask them to draw. You're going to ask them to draw from at the beginning, and you're going to ask them to draw at the end. But in the middle, you're going to check on a whole bunch of small skills that they need and begin to learn. And you're going to check on those. But if you can, you keep your SGOs at the broadest possible base that you can. Okay. Now it's getting late and I don't want to keep you anymore and I'm very tired. So <laughs> I'm going to give you a, my final uh, roundup for this. Uh, this, is, uh, this is a line from uh, Woody Allen. I, uh, I know Woody Allen's in disrepute, but uh, he's very funny. He, wrote, he once wrote something called the all-purpose graduation speech. And he said, this is, a speech, this is a speech for those people that are going out to try something new that's hard, difficult, has conflict. He said, for those people, this is my hope for graduation. He said, when you're going out to try something new, there are always two roads available to you. One of the roads is filled with doom and gloom, complaints, obstacles, difficulties. He said, the other road is filled with total destruction. May you choose the right road. Thank you all very much. <laughs>